Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited to bring you this last minute project for November. It's the seashell stitch scarf with tassels. If you're interested in the written pattern, it's available in the link above. And once you get it, come on back and we'll get started. Good morning everyone. Today I wanna show you how to make this really great scarf. It's called the seashell with tassel scarf. Um, it's a pattern that I wrote about three years ago and I really had no intention of teaching it um, because I used to make them and sell them when I had my little business. So, but today I wanna go ahead and show you guys how to make it. It's really wonderful. It's very comfortable, it's squishy. Um, especially if you use the type of yarn and the size crochet hook that I have inside this pattern. You'll want a size I crochet hook, but for the sake of the video today, I'm going to use a J because I'm using a completely different type of yarn. Um, for the sake of the video, I'm using a size uh, 4 worsted weight yarn. And this is the I Love This brand in the color Stonewash. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and use this one today. It's what I have kind of laying around. So I just wanna give you guys an idea of how to work up the actual scarf. So inside the pattern, and I'll show you the first page here. It calls for a size I crochet hook, 5.5 millimeter. You would need four skeins or 200 grams of the one ply super fine weight yarn. So the type of yarn that I used for this particular scarf here, I purchased at Smiley's Yarns Online. It was Red Heart Stardust in the lot number 1813 purple. Um, I'm not sure if they still make that yarn or not anymore. You can look and find out, but I would definitely recommend any one ply super fine yarn with a size I crochet hook. It makes a scarf super squishy and super comfy, and that's why I made it that way. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on how to make this pattern. And as I mentioned, in the intro, you guys can go and pick up this pattern for a very small fee over on my Etsy store. And if you need that link, go ahead and go back to the beginning of the video and there's a little I card in the top. Click that and you can go get it real quick. Then come back here and we'll make it together. All right, for this pattern, we need to make a slip knot. And then we're gonna chain 43 loosely. Now for row one, we are gonna go ahead and work into the fourth chain from the hook. Now for this particular pattern, we will be counting the space here where the yarn is coming out of. So you'll say that's the first space and then count. So that's one, two, three, and a four. Or what you can do is completely skip this one here if that's confusing and then just count to three. One, two, three. So um, in either case, we are gonna go ahead and count this particular space as a working space. So we're gonna count down. So one, two, three, four. And we're gonna make a double crochet in that space. We're gonna chain two. And then put a single crochet in that same space as we did the double crochet. All right, now this is what the shell looks like. When we skipped these first spaces, this created one double crochet. And then we made the double crochet, we chained two, and then we made one single. So this is what the clusters are all gonna look like, or the, the shells will look like. So we're gonna go ahead and skip the next two spaces. And in that third space, we're gonna make another shell. So make two double crochets in that third space, another double crochet in that same space, chain two, and single crochet in the same space. Skip two spaces, in the third space, make another shell. Two double crochets, Chain two, one single crochet, and the shell's complete. Skip two spaces, one, two, in the third space, make another shell. Two double crochets, chain two, 
chain two, one single crochet in the same space. And that's what your work is going to start to look like. Skip the next two spaces. In the third space, make another shell. Two double crochets. Chain two and single crochet in the same space. Skip the next two spaces. In the third space, make another shell. All right, now you guys know exactly how to make the shell, so I'm gonna leave you to it. Don't forget to skip your first two. In the third space, make your shell. Skip the next two, make your shell in the third space, and keep doing that all the way to the end of the row, and I'll meet you at the end. In the very last space down here, you're gonna make a shell. All right, so here we are at the end. We have two spaces to skip, and in that very last space, we're gonna make the very last shell. Two double crochets. Chain two, one single crochet, and we're done. Now, at the end of this row, we're gonna chain two and turn our work. Now for the duration of this video, we're gonna make only clusters. So, in the very first space here, you'll notice this is the largest space of the cluster. This is where the chain two space is from the other side. We're going to be working into the chain two spaces of every single shell, okay? So that means is we're going to work a shell inside of the shell. Right here, your chain two counts as your first double crochet. We're going to make another double crochet right inside the space. Chain two and make a single crochet in the same space. All right, and in the next space, find that chain two spot there. We're gonna make two double crochets. Chain two, and one single crochet in the same space. Moving to the next shell, two double crochets in the chain two space. And then we're going to chain two. And then one single crochet in the space. All right, so you guys know exactly what to do. In every chain two space, you're going to make your shell. So I will leave you to it. Don't forget, two double crochets, chain two, one single crochet, and every single one, and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so now we're at the very end, and this is the very last shell that we're going to work in. Go ahead and make another shell in that chain two space. And then we're gonna chain two and turn our work. So this is what it looks like so far. And every single row is gonna be exactly like row two. We're gonna repeat the exact same thing. So go ahead and in this very first shell right here, we're gonna go ahead and make one double crochet, chain two, single crochet for one shell. And we're gonna do the same exact thing in this shell, this shell all the way down, the entire row, chain two at the end, and then do the same thing for every single row until your scarf is as long as you want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys here to go ahead and finish this scarf all by yourselves. Um, if you need to see the video again, you know, or you need to remember how to make these, go back to the beginning of the video where I start teaching how to make the shells. And um, it's simple, remember, two double crochets, chain two, one single, that's it. And I, I would even just write it down on a piece of paper, two doubles, chain two, one single, because it's the only thing you're gonna be doing for the rest of the pattern. Again, if you wanna buy the pattern that I have, you can go ahead and go to the beginning of the video. There's an iCard. You can click on that link and you can get it. But anyway, guys, it's really simple. And I'm going to make mine long enough until it wraps around me at least once. 
and probably until the ends of the scarves go down to about mid waist. And that's about how I like to wear my scarves. You need to measure yours and make yours the size that you want it or for the size of the person that you're making it for, make sure you measure it that way. It's usually better to go ahead and just measure according to the person than trying to use uh, a measuring tape or something like that because you get a much more accurate fit with a scarf when you just use the person that you're making it for as the measurement itself. So anyway, you guys go ahead and finish this and I'll meet you at the very end when I finish mine and I will show you how to bind off and we'll even add the fringe to the end together. Okay, you guys, so I am at the very end of the very last row that I'm gonna do for my scarf. And we are gonna follow the very last row part of the pattern. And if you purchase the uh, pattern from me, then you'll see that it's actually gonna be on the same uh, page as the rest of the pattern is. So now what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that this side of the scarf matches the opposite end where we first started. And when we first started, we started with a chain, um, a 43. So we want to give it that same look as the other side has. So let's go ahead and move on to the very last part here. All right, so in the pattern, since we're repeating row two the entire time to the very end, when we start a new row, we always chain two. So go ahead and chain two now and turn your work. All right, so since we're gonna make this side look exactly like the other side when we first started, we're gonna go ahead and slip stitch into that space there where we've been working our shells. And then we're gonna chain two. And then we're gonna continue doing that. We're gonna slip stitch into every single one of the chain two spaces of our row inside the, the shell stitches. So we're gonna slip stitch, chain two, slip stitch, chain two, slip stitch, chain two, slip stitch, chain two, all the way across until you are completely done with this row. And then I will meet you at the other end and we will add our tassels or fringe, whichever you like to call it, together. All right, so I'm at the very end. I've just made a slip stitch into this very last shell. What you're gonna do now is chain two and you're gonna slip stitch into the top of this area right here, the very last space or what would be considered this chain here. You're gonna go right into that very top and finish that off so that way it matches both ends. And they're exactly identical. And now this side of your scarf matches the side that we, where we started. All right, let's go ahead and get out our scissors and cut the yarn and we'll go ahead and start tasseling. All right, so I moved the camera up a bit so you can get more of a view of what I'm doing here. Um, so what I've done here is I've already cut off my yarn and now we're gonna grab that yarn and pull it through and tighten it down. I'm not gonna make really long tassels this time around. I'm just gonna kind of keep them a little bit shorter. Now what you wanna do is kind of have a basic idea of how long you want your fringe to be. So what we're gonna do is like for mine here, I'm gonna measure mine here. I'm gonna fold my yarn in half like this and I'm gonna kind of just use this as a measure. So, like this. I have a bit basic idea of what I'm looking at. So I need to cut it right about here, like that. And then when I take this yarn, I will know exactly how long of a strand of yarn I need to make every time. So you put the strand of working yarn coming from your yarn skein and you put the cut piece of yarn and the yarn from the skein together. And then you cut them based on size, the size you've already chosen. Just like this. And however you want to add your fringe, I would say go and look at the ends of your scarf and see where you'd like to add your fringe to. 
and how many pieces you'd like to add as fringe. You can add five, make like really large tassels. What I would do is put the tassels here between the uh, chain two spaces that we created to make a chain look. That's where I would put mine. And that's probably where I will go ahead and add mine. And this right here, I'm also gonna put one in here to blend this piece of yarn into it. So then that way, you know, you can't tell that it's there. So go ahead and cut your yarn pieces the length you want them. Get as many as you need. Or just kind of cut as you go. And I will meet you to show you how to fasten the tassels. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add three pieces of yarn to each tassel. That means I'll have two here. I'll use these two here um, for this one so that there's an even amount of three there. And then I'm gonna get my crochet hook. Let me turn this scarf around here. All right, we're gonna go from this side. All right, so in between the areas here where there are chain two spaces, we're gonna go ahead and add, I'm gonna, that's where I'm gonna add mine. So you choose where you're gonna add yours. You wanna hold your yarn like this, get your hook through that space. Grab the end of the tassel with your hook, pull it through like this. And now you can either do this, with, actually you could probably have a bigger hook um, for this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and open one of mine. I'm gonna use a bigger hook for what I'm doing here because I can grab the entire piece with a larger hook and then just pull it through. That takes a lot of work out of putting in tassels. So that's the way I'm gonna do mine. And that's all you do. So go ahead and add your tassels to your scarf and I will go ahead and meet you back when I'm finished with mine. Before I actually let you go, I'm gonna show you exactly how to add your, your fringe to this one here where you're gonna put this together. All right, so first of all, obviously, you're gonna put your hook through that space, okay? Have your tassel ready, and this only has two because I'm gonna add this one in, so that'll make the three. You bring your yarn through, and now you let go of this part. You add this part of the tassel, okay, this leftover tassel here, you add that in. And then you're going to grab that and pull the whole thing through, and now that tassel is 100% part of the fringe. Okay, and that's all you do. So go ahead and add your fringe and I'll uh, come back when I'm finished. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you guys through this very last fringe application here. I'm cutting off the very last piece of yarn that I'm gonna use. And what you wanna do is these ones that are in the corners where you don't have tassels, you wanna remember that there's a chain two here. You wanna go between there at the very end to go ahead and add those very, very corner tassels. My bigger hook. So that's how you add them to the end. That way they're out there on the corner and then the side of your scarf. Okay, so I have finished both sides of mine. I have fringe on this side and I have fringe on this side. Now, if you guys are like me and you use the uh, I Love This Yarn brand yarn, you will have added in a skein. So here is mine. And it took me roughly two skeins of that yarn. So if you're watching this and you decided to go over the video first before you actually go and make the item, then I'll just to let you know, pick up two skeins of the I Love This Yarn or something that's comparable to the same size. Let's get out our yarn needles here. All right, and go ahead and thread your yarn needle. I'm using actually a darning needle or a tapestry needle. And then you're just gonna go ahead and weave your ends in best you can. Don't pull the yarn tight because that'll pull your stitches and it makes it look not so nice. Um, so when I come out the one side, I go back through, but what I do is I kind of bypass over the area that I came through. I go over this area here and I put a couple of strands of yarn here between where I re-enter and I can go back the other direction. And then I just 
gently pull it down. That way it's not seen. And then do it one more time. It came through right here. I come to the side a little bit and re-entry again. And then barely pull it just enough for it to blend in. And that's all I do. And then I snip. And that's all there is to the hiding the yarn ends. What's really nice about the adding the tassels is that you don't have to even worry about sewing in those ends because they become a part of the fringe. So that's all you have to do. You can't even see that you even hid anything in there. Well guys, thank you so much for joining me today for this video. I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope that you'll make a lot of these and that you'll give them away as gifts. Don't you just love that stitch? Isn't that gorgeous? And if you liked the video, do me a favor and go ahead and hit that like button down there. If you haven't subscribed and you like my videos and you want to come back and see more and make more great projects to come, go ahead and hit the subscribe button now. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can see when all of my new videos come out. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and for all the latest updates on future projects, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at the handle at Fiber Theory. Remember to subscribe and hit that bell icon for all future project notifications. Have a great day.